Hello, so this is Kasturi Mija. I am going to present my four papers of LCSA and WSEM, that is a uh, woman issues and um, world philosophies. Uh, so let me share my screen. Yeah. So uh, the paper that I'm going to talk about is the first, uh, the paper that I'm going to talk about at first is my paper two for W uh, for LCSA women issues that is goddesses and Kasuri meaning goddesses in me. Uh, so the CC statement of my paper is uh, a person acts virtuously if they possess it and leave the virtue. So I think that we cannot um, we cannot uh, express or present the potentials and virtues that are not inherent in us. Uh, and we can only leave the virtues that we possess. We cannot leave the virtues that are not inherent, to, inherent in us. Uh, the first goddess that I can link with me is Demeter. Uh, Demeter is the goddess of earth and motherhood. Um, Demeter uh, used to possess the virtues of humanity and love towards nature. Uh, she used to possess the virtues of humanity because uh, she used to recognize the vulnerability of babies. She used to babysit babies when she was very young and she was very loving towards the nature. She used to plant the seed of nurturing, which I think is really important. So when I, when I compare myself with Demeter, uh, I feel that I'm really caring towards children. Also, it might be because I have grown up in an orphanage. I like to work with children. I like to be with children. And um, I'm really acknowledging and understanding, meaning that I uh, understand the situation that people go through. And also, I, I, I really fall in love with the nature because um, nature is one thing that I really like the most because I, I believe that without nature, we human beings cannot exist and we cannot think of our survival in the absence of nature. Uh, the second God that I um, can actually uh, connect myself with is God Apollo. So God Apollo was the God of archery, music and dance truth and prophecy, healing and diseases, sun and light, and poetry. He used to um, possess the virtues of self-control, right, truthfulness, and self-knowledge. He was not fascinated by law. He, he was very uh, intelligent individual, and um, he had gained knowledge on uh, various aspects of um, life. Uh, he had gained knowledge on various fields such as medicine which is really tough and um, uh, he used to um, seek father figure for guidance even when he was mature and adult and uh, he had self-knowledge because he recognized ed education as a necessity and I believe that education is the uh, key to success and so comparing myself with God Apollo, I feel that I'm very determined and career focused. I am also like God Apollo. I'm not fascinated by love. Uh, I, I have always been good in education since my childhood and I love poetry a lot. I have written a lot of poetries as well, but since they are mostly in Nepali language, it is very tough for uh, international people to get the meaning of what I really want to evoke through my poetries. And I also have evo emotional distance, uh, like uh, emotional distance issues like Apollo. I like to be alone most of the time, but, but I do like to communicate with people. The third goddess that I can relate myself with is goddess Athena. So goddess Athena, she is the goddess of justice, wisdom, and war. And uh, she used to possess the virtues such as rectifications of wrongs, practical wisdom, and equity. Goddess Athena used to criticize men for the way they victimize women. And she used to convince men to value both men and women. And she uh, implemented the idea of equality between men and women. Uh, I feel that uh, 
if we did not have goddess Athena in the history, then it would be very tough for the human beings to identify, to recognize the importance of both males and females in the society because we cannot run. I mean, our society cannot run smoothly in the absence of uh, either men or women. Um, both males and females, they play significant role in the achievement of sustainable development of this society. So I believe that it's it's very important that we um, that we value both males and females. So comparing myself with Goddess Athena, uh, I was the prefect of my school for around two years and I uh, always acted as the class representative of my class each and every year that I have attended so far, uh, I am a strategic in the uh, sense that uh, I can persuade people. And so I have always been raising voice for victims of victimization. I cannot tolerate that. So um, another goddess that I can relate myself with is uh, goddess Artemis. So Artemis is the goddess of wild animals, the hunt and vegetation and of the chastity and childbirth. Uh, goddess Athena, uh, sorry, goddess Artemis she used to possess the virtues of rational ambition and emotional distance. So uh, she was very focused and independent and she used to keep herself alone. So I feel that I'm really independent because uh, I have struggled a lot to uh, reach at the point that I'm currently in. And I, I used to take care of my personal belongings since my childhood. And uh, still, so now I have been supporting myself. So in this sense, I feel that I'm focused. I'm really focused and independent. Uh, so comparing myself with uh, Goddess Athena, I think that uh, I'm very quick tempered. So I'm quick tempered in the sense that I become quick tempered in situations that don't make sense to me. Um, but um, the good thing about me being quick tempered is that um, whenever I become quick tempered, uh, I um, normally don't think about the consequences of what is going to happen next. Uh, I actually become quick tempered in situations that do not make sense. And uh, if something, if some incidents hurt others, then I cannot tolerate and I become quick tempered in that case. And I think that that's totally okay. And another thing is I'm independent and, and, and I am focused on each and everything that I put my mind into doing. Uh, so the last goddess that I can relate myself uh, with is uh, goddess Hestia. So Hestia was the goddess of home, hearth, and fire. She used to possess the virtues of rational humor, truthfulness, and forgiveness, forgivingness. So um, although goddess Hestia was introvert, she was a very good counselor, and she used to express herself well to people, meaning that she used to <clears throat> present the way she was in real. She didn't use to lie and uh, she used to let things go off. So when I compare myself with goddess uh, Hestia, I feel that uh, goddess Hestia, so I can actually, I love educating people around me and um, I used to like uh, talking to people, communicating with them about the issues that they go through, about the problems that they encounter in their lives. And um, so uh, frankly speaking, I had always dreamed of becoming a good counselor, I have to say. And um, I never underestimate or overestimate the power, talents and knowledge I possess because I believe that the more we uh, use our talent, the more we share our knowledge, the more we become knowledgeable and educated. So uh, I feel that I can actually um, convince people about the importance of education. I can actually uh, educate them. Um, so yeah, uh, if there are any queries, you can feel free to let me know. Yeah, thank you.
So now I'm going to talk about my second paper. Uh, uh, so I'm going to talk about my second paper and that's the paper for uh, LCSA as well. So it's the final paper that I wrote. Uh, so the paper of, uh, the title of my paper is Creation of Sustainable Society Through Education and Counseling. So yeah, talking about the background of my paper, I have actually talked about how I grew up in an orphanage and how that has shaped my uh, thought regarding, a, regarding the career that I always wanted to have in my life. And I have also talked about uh, how um, the Athenian, uh, how the, um, gods and goddess of Greece has impacted me, how they have influenced me, how they have saved me and how they have motivated me. So, uh, so talking about goddess Demeter, she has, um, she is uh, inspiring, she is an inspiring goddess to me because she inspires me to uh, nurture both humanity and nature. Athena, because um, Athena, because uh, she motivates and encourages, she inspires me to work for the humanity. She uh, inspires me to fight for the injustice that people go through. And Artemis, because uh, goddess Artemis, she you know, motivates and inspires me to become an independent individual who can actually stand up for herself and for the people uh, that, um, that are around me. Goddess Apollo, because, uh, sorry, God Apollo uh, inspires me to be educated and educate the people around me. And also he actually uh, inspires me to become a, a well-focused individual. Mm, so goddess Estia inspires me to become a very good counselor. Actually, uh, I had always uh, thought of uh, becoming a psychologist since my high school. And after getting to know more about Hestia as a goddess and uh, herself being a good counselor, I really became motivated to become a psychologist in future. Mm. So the main claim of my paper is that females and vulnerable children, including the orphan and abandoned children, should get the opportunity to exercise their fundamental rights and should be aware of their responsibilities and obligations towards the community of their existence and granting this opportunity and making themselves knowledgeable is possible only with the establishment and effective operation of national and international non-profit organizations that works for the welfare and betterment of children and females in local, national, and international level. So I believe that um, we cannot achieve a sustainable development if there are organizations that works for profit. Uh, if there are organizations that works for profit uh, by uh, utilizing uh, the vulnerability of children and females, then, then that does not uh, benefit this society and it cannot be considered um, a fruit for the sustainable development of any society that we live in. Um, so significance of paper, when I have to talk about the significance of my paper, I think that many people around the world, they are not actually aware of how uh, orphan kids and abandoned kids and um, uh, females that go through servitude of um, camillaries go through. And since most of the uh, individuals, they get to grow up in their own family, they don't really understand how uh, indifferent people have to live their life. So also they are not aware of uh, many organizations that work for the children and uh, females that go through a lot in their lives. So my paper actually focuses on Nepal Youth Foundation 
in its program. So Nepali Foundation, it is an international organization which is a US-based organization and it, it works uh, for the welfare of children as well as works as well as for the betterment of Kamlaris. So Kamlaris, Kamlaris system is basically a uh, system where uh, females, they are kept in uh, in a house to do household course since their childhood and they're, they are actually bonded laborers and they cannot exercise their fundamental rights when they are there. Uh, so my paper also focuses on Olga Mori. So Olga Mori, she is the founder of Nepal Youth Foundation. Um, she is actually um, the uh, retired lawyer and uh, she is uh, what she is uh, one of the personalities uh, who is really focused in social service, and I believe that she can she is the role model of uh, social service to people. And um, my paper also highlights the roles of uh, women in sustainable development because uh, because. Um, uh, Olga Murray, she is a female and she is the one who uh, thought of establishing this organization named uh, Nepal Youth Foundation through which many Nepalese people they have been benefited, not only orphan kids and females, but uh, many, um, many educated people who have not been able to get job. They have been benefited uh, by different programs organized by Nepal Youth Foundation, such as um, vocational trainings of agriculture, plumbing, um, and electricity. So uh, my paper actually discusses about the story of Tulasha Chowdhury and a story of Sushila Chowdhury. So uh, these stories are actually uh, taken from the uh, homepage of uh, Nepal Youth Foundation. Uh, they are actually the newsletter, I have to say. So, um, uh, Tulasa Saudari, uh, talking about Tulasa Saudari, she was an individual uh, who lost her mother uh, when she was very young, and she has to bear a lot of um, lot of pain during her childhood and she uh, due to the torture and pain given by her uh, family members she could not express her well but then when she got the opportunity to talk to people uh, talk to counselors of Ankur um, counseling and training center which is located at the head office of Nepal Youth Foundation uh, she actually opened up and she explained her story to people and uh, she sees that uh, she was able to become a person, I have to say, become a person due to the um, support of the counselors at, at Ankur uh, Psychosocial uh, Counseling Training, Counseling and Training Center. A uh, story of Susila Chaudhary is discussed because Susila Chaudhary uh, had never been educated. She never attended any schools in her life. But then um, when she got the opportunity to uh, get uh, vocational training of pig farming from Nepali Foundation, uh, she, um, she learned a lot and she also uh, she took loan from cooperative and started her own business and she became able to earn a maximum profit and uh, she became able to pay, re repay the loan that she had taken. So basically, um, uh, talking while the story of stories of Tulasa Chaudhary and Sushila Chaudhary are discussed in my paper, uh, discussed in my paper, uh, because these uh, stories uh, will allow my audience to know that uh, counseling is a, uh, isn't really is a really important part of human life because sometimes we get lost in life and counseling helps us a lot and um, vocational education because uh, I don't believe that education can only be acquired by attending um, schools or any other uh, formal educational institutions rather education can be gained uh, from informal edu uh, educational institutions as well in Nepali foundation uh, by running uh, a, a vocational school has been acting as a very good example of institution that provides vocational education. 
So talking about my conclusion part, uh, uh, so I think that, so we should put hands together for building a sustainable society with the potentials we possess by motivating others and being inspired by the good deeds of others. If we don't uh, uh, have the humor, if we don't respect the good deeds of others, then we cannot imagine, we cannot uh, imagine uh, the achievement of sustainable development in our society. Uh, so if you have any queries, you can feel free to let me know. So I'm done with this paper. Uh, thank you. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about my next paper. Um, that is... Um, so yeah i'm going to talk about my wsm world philosophies paper so it's uh the paper on aristotelian virtues and vices and their exhibition in Montana. so this paper is actually very long because uh i have actually um talked about mr tungana and i have compared his um virtues with the virtues of Aristotelian virtues and vices. And this is actually an essay, so it is quite long compared to all my other papers. Uh, so uh, talking about the Aristotelian virtues and vices, so uh, temperance, courage, generosity, magnanimity, and even temperedness, rational ambition, rational pride, rational humor, rational friendship, sociability, and truthfulness are the uh, Aristotelian virtues and vices. Um, so talking about temperance and Mr. Dungana. Temperance is the uh, moderation in action and thought. So Mr. Dungana, he has the ability of self-control so uh, he has his own family, but then he used to live with us. He, um, he used to control his own feelings and uh, desire for things that we human beings normally uh, express in front of people. But then he, he was a very self-controlled individual. And uh, he's actually an example of a very good individual with uh, the potential of self-control. Uh, so Kores and Mr. Dungana. So Kores is the ability to act well in situations involving fear. Uh, Mr. Dungana is a glaucoma patient. He lost his mother when he was in Australia. And uh, even, so immediately after having glaucoma, he had to come back to Nepal for the final rites of his uh, demised mother. And he could not go back to Australia for his job. And so he actually thought of establishing an organization named Sanu Foundation Nepal. Uh, so he actually took risk. I mean, he was very courageous enough to establish the organization because uh, being, uh, uh, being a patient of glaucoma is very risky because um, if glaucoma, glaucoma becomes worse, then it will be very difficult for an individual to uh, view the things that is around him. Uh, so I actually, I really loved the idea that he expresses to people stating that he wants to see the world through the eyes of the uh, orphan and abundant kids that he has um, brought up in the orphanage. And I feel really glad to be uh, one of those kids. So generosity, magnanimity, and Mr. Dungana. Uh, generosity is the quality of being kind and giving away money and time for the well-being of others. And magnanimity is the quality of being rich and giving away money to promote an entire society's well-being. So Mr. Dumena, he worked for entire uh, 12 years in Australia. And uh, when he came back to Nepal, he established Sanu Foundation Nepal. And he is such a considerate individual that he doesn't uh, push himself backward uh, when, uh, when the time comes in front of him, where he has to give his time to um, children at Sanu Foundation Nepal. He is the, he's an individual 
who take care of children so well. And uh, the most important thing that I like about him is he doesn't, uh, he doesn't normally take help from people. Uh, he has used, he has used his own expenses to cover the expenditure of kids at San Foundation Nepal. And uh, so when I see his life, like, he has been using his own expenses to uh, cover up our expenditure. I feel really encouraged and motivated to work for betterment of kids like me and uh, other kids at Sino Foundation Nepal in the future. So even temperedness and Mr. Dumian. Even temperedness, it is the potential of not being annoyed and angry easily. So again, uh, I feel that each and every human being possesses both the virtues and vices. Uh, virtues, they are the good aspect of human beings and vices, they are the evil signs. And uh, Suman, Mr. Tungana, he, uh, he has one vice uh, compared to Aristotelian vir virtues and vices, and that is even temperedness. So, um, uh, he is even tempered in most of the cases, but he is a very quick tempered person when the cases of injustice come in front of him. Uh, when, uh, so once he, um, his relative was um, accused of uh, opening a washroom uh, at the side of the pavement of road and uh, so when the police come, came and uh, talked about this, he became very furious and he uh, was arrested. I mean, he was taken to uh, the prison for a day. So I think that uh, sometimes quick temperedness can also act as a good thing because uh, in this case, he acted very well. He uh, fought for uh, he fought for uh, his relative who was not able to speak for herself and I really appreciated that and I, I, I think that we, uh, we have to stand up for those people who cannot express themselves. Um, so rational ambition and Mr. Domiana. So rational ambition is the ability to aim to succeed at the kind of work that develops one's natural abilities to the highest level possible in the way most meaningful to each person and the way that also contributes most to the society as a whole. So Mr. Dungana, he aims for sustainable development and he is very positive towards the work he does. So uh, some people might think that despite having his own family, he has been taking care of uh, many orphan kids and abandoned kids, they might not like that, but he's really positive towards taking care of orphan kids and abandoned kids because he believes that uh, we human beings have not taken birth just to live our own life, but we are here for the betterment of humanity as a whole. And uh, when we talk about, when we uh, think about humanity's betterment, then it, it, is really important that we become positive towards the work that others do and the work that we do as well. So rational pride and Mr. Dungana. So rational pride, it is uh, knowing how to honor citizens who make the most meaningful contributions to the social well-being and using their talents well. So Mr. Dungana, he wrecks the good deeds done by others. Uh, actually, there was a group of people coming from uh, Om Santi, Satya Sai Baba. So they used to follow Satya Sai Baba and they used to come to feed us at the orphanage during our weekends. And Mr. Dungana, he used to really appreciate them. He used to welcome them at our orphanage because he used to believe that uh, we should always appreciate the good deeds done by others. And I think that he is very true in this sense, in this concept. So rational humor and Mr. Dungana. Rational humor, it is the ability to take things seriously, but once of lightly and learn how to laugh at all the ways our natural vulnerability and limitations lead to upshot situations, taking serious things seriously, but own self lightly, learning how to laugh at all the ways. So actually, 
Mr. Dungana, he is very understanding and considerate, I have to say. He doesn't make fun of people around him. And I, I really uh, like it because uh, I feel that uh, sometimes when we laugh, it can become a uh, kind of bully to others and it is not good to laugh upon others. So rational friendship and Mr. Dungana. So rational friendship, it is the ability to bond with someone else based on the common desire to exercise and exercise one of the virtues and inspire each other to live a higher quality of life in order to develop further. So Mr. Dungana has mostly social service oriented friends and uh, they used to help him and assist him when he used to face any difficulties while taking care of us at Sanu Foundation Nepal. Uh, so social ability and Mr. Dungana. Social ability, it is the ability to put up with minor injustices and slights for the sake of overall social well-being. It, uh, so Mr. Dungana, he used to get socialized easily. He can actually adapt to any environment that he is exposed to. And he also uh, teaches individuals around him to be social. And I think that it is really important for an individual to socialize in order to become able to stay in an, uh, in a society. Uh, so the final uh, virtues that I'm going to talk about and compare uh, it with Mr. Dungana is truthfulness. Truthfulness is the potential to know oneself and not underestimate and overestimate one's talent, knowledge, and power. So Mr. Dungana has always fulfilled the pleas that he has made so far. So talking about him and me, um, he has always uh, taken care of me very well and uh, so what I remember till today is that he has promised me that he would support me unless I become able to support myself. And, and he, he was very honest in this because he had, he supported me until I become able to become an independent individual. And I still seek guidance from him. So he used to share uh, true stories about people so that we can actually get motivated and become good citizens in future. So um, uh, I have also talked about uh, Aristotle's doctrines of golden mean in my paper. So if we could reason our, our way into virtue, we might be able to set our precise rules for how to behave in different situations and he is not wrong. So um, I think uh, that uh, Aristotle, Aristotle's doctrine of golden mean is very true. Um, so talking about the conclusion, so we human beings possess both the good virtues and vices, but it is important that we avoid the vices and implant, the, implant and exhibit the good virtues if we wish to become good individuals. Yeah it is really important that we understand the situations that we go through that other people go through and we have to become we have to be able to differentiate between good and bad because because if we can't become able to differentiate uh, the good and bad thing then uh, the meaning of being a human being doesn't make sense because human beings possess consciousness and that will help us to uh, differentiate between good and bad. So again, if you have any queries, you can feel free to let me know. I'm done with this paper. Thank you. Um, so now I'm going to talk about my final paper in WSEM. So, so my final paper in WSEM is my world view. So world view, it actually contacts somebody's assessment on starting point and ethical quality, where individual come from and what is good and bad. So 
actually world view is um, the way of seeing the world around us it is the way of perceiving how the world around us is sometimes sometimes we might take situations in a different manner and the reality might be different right so actually worldview of an individual differs from another so i think that my worldview is quite different from other individuals as well uh, so in my paper i have talked about uh, the segments that have shaped my uh, worldview so the most important uh, segments that have set my worldview are ethics, human nature, and God. Uh, so talking about ethics and my worldview. Uh, so um, ethics, they are the moral principles that govern a person's behavior. So in my paper, I have talked about Socrates' behavior when he was asked to skip. Uh, actually, he has very good reasons uh, for not skipping. Uh, because he uh, he says that uh, a good individual doesn't think about the bad consequences of any of the deaths that he has not committed. And it is not essential to fear of anything that we have not committed yet. And we should not think of losing a good friend in the course of uh, escaping because um, if we are true friends and uh, uh, we can support each other and that can uh, act, that can uh, work out very well. Um, uh, so uh, ethics, so uh, talking about ethics, we human beings have different ways of being entertained. For instance, some of us might uh, become entertained by reading books some of us might be entertained by working on computers some of us might be entertained by playing games some of us might be entertained by uh, watching movies so it differs from people to people and so in this case the ethics and principles differ from people to people as well and so uh, i have stated in my paper that uh, it is not good to be corrupted by the pressure of others because that will not uh, give us um, a positive result. And um, so another thing is that uh, we should not hurt other people intentionally because um, the fact is that we become treated, we become treated in the way that we treat others. So if we want to be respected and honored by other people, then it's important that we understand how other people are and respect and pay respect uh, towards them in the way that we want to be respected as well. Uh, I have also talked about democracy and citizens in my paper. So uh, in democratic uh, nations, most of the in in democratic uh, countries, citizens are provided with their fundamental rights, and so I think that we should be able to understand our responsibilities while we exercise our rights as well. Because uh, without being responsible and accountable towards the uh, things that we have, it will be very difficult for us to uh, understand uh, how the world functions. So um, I have also talked about uh, Aristotle's uh, political virtues. Um, I think that he, um, I think that uh, Aristotle is very true uh, regarding political leaders and virtues that they should possess. He says that um, political leaders should formulate uh, laws um, that uh, work that citizens must follow and uh, while formulating the laws for citizens uh, it is important that political leaders should uh, keep in mind about the formulation of laws for the organization that runs in the country because uh, if the organization runs without uh, good policies then it will be difficult to uh, run the country well and uh, political leaders they should be aware of laws and puni punishments and should punish the um, criminals as per law so religion and my worldview religion and god they have uh, shaped my worldview a lot i have to say i am a hindu and so the most 
frustrating thing that I see in my religion when uh, women have menstruation is that they are not allowed to go to temples, they are not allowed to go to kitchen because they think that, so as per the religion, Hindu religion, uh, females become impure during menstruation and I think that is totally wrong because no female uh, becomes impure during their menstruation as menstruation is the natural process and uh, so talking about nature nature uh, uh, we we Hindus actually worship nature and I think that uh, because of this uh, practice uh, we Hindus uh, encourages the encourage the world to uh, protect the nature and uh, so uh, the most important thing the most interesting thing that I can see in Hinduism about Kali Yuga is that so Kali Yuga is the present il, uh, era that we human beings have been living and people they um, uh, say that uh, the world is going to end in Kali Yuga because of the disrespect of relationships between human beings and the corrupted minded people. And I think that is really true because uh, I am seeing the similar situations that um, matches with the things told in Bhagavad Gita and, uh, and the things told by other gods and goddesses in our religious books. Uh, so uh, talking about, so my conclusion is that, so now I have, I am content with the worldview I possess. Uh, I have, I'm really grateful for being able to become a part of this world philosophies class because uh, so many things have uh, changed and my worldview have changed a lot after um, getting to know more about people, more about uh, political situations, more about religions uh, through my classmates from different countries and also my professor. Uh, I believe that the worldview of mine will change as the time passes. Um, so again, if you have any queries, you can feel free to let me know. And so I'm actually done with all my, my papers. Uh, Thank you very much for your patience and listening to me. Thank you.